No, I'm just at my parents' house. I'm moving house and office at the moment, so. Ah. I'm sitting it's out. It's still at Sunshine Coast or somewhere there? Sunshine Coast, yeah, still Palmwoods. Hmm. So what's been happening? We've got a few people on the call. Yeah. Dave, it's been a while. Yeah, it sure has. And goals, what have you been working on? Anything exciting? Oh, I've got um, three people I'm working on at the moment. So fingers crossed we can have them signed up soon. Yeah. Yeah. So three potential just, listings. Yeah, I just... Um, my last listing, so I need need to get more in the in there. Yeah, nice. Yeah. The, um, and you've done some door knocking, you said. Yeah, yeah. 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 Started door knocking this week. Tell us a bit about that. What's working? What's not? I I think personally, I think it's much. You almost everybody you talk to. Yeah, I think. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Esther, loves, Esther loves the door knock. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm excited to get out there because you actually get a good conversation out of people. On the phone, it's it's hard to get a good conversation out of people compared to being in their face. Yeah. And, and you don't get re get the rejection like you would normally on, on the phone. Yes, uh, you do, but... <laughs> Pardon? Sometimes you do, but it's usually just someone saying, no, we're fine, thank you. Yeah, Bye. exactly, exactly. That's that's about the worst it gets, not like, get out of here, I don't, don't want to deal with you real estate agents and stuff like that. <laughs> I just find, yeah, you, you can pinpoint where they're at. So it opens a bit more dialogue for you to say, oh, you know, were you originally from Gympie? And then they kind of let you know a bit more. So they might say something like, Oh look, we did think about selling, and and you get a little bit more information to where they're at. Yeah, yeah. I had um, I went into one street yesterday afternoon, and I spoke to pretty much half the street. Everybody that was home, they were all nice. And then neighbours, I walked off up the street. Neighbours had come back, and all these guys just standing in the middle of the street talking. And they called me back to chat to the rest of the neighbours that had just moved up. Yeah. It's probably because you've been all in bloody lockdown for too long. Eh? Everyone wants to chat with someone. Yeah. Give it a couple of months, eh? We'll be yeah. <laughs> That's good. So are you yeah. any scripts at the doors or just having a chat? Like it's working. Just having a chat. I just go go around and I've been knocking and saying, oh, I'm just here to introduce myself. I give my introduction and um, yeah, get into a conversation with them. Talk, talk about real estate or just I'm Dave, I work for this company. Yeah, I, I just say I'm Dave, Dave Davis, work for Osway Realty. We're just down in the Roman Town Center because I've been doing local to the shopping center here. Yeah. So I just, yeah, introduce them yourself, tell them where we're at. Um, and then generally they, they were asking about um, what's going on with the market, telling me about property that's that they've seen sell in their area. And we just have a chat about that. The way to go. Are you getting details like emails or numbers or anything like that? Well, not at the moment. I'm just um, going around and introducing myself, but I'm going to be doing the same streets every month. Oh, yeah. bit of a plan. Yeah, so I'm just just trying to get 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 out there and get known to these people. Yeah, no, that's really um. I think that's a great plan. I remember when I first started on the phones, I just called and did the same thing, introduced myself. Yeah. Um, obviously not face to face. I did some door knocking as well, but I wasn't out there trying to get um, numbers. You know, I wasn't trying out there to just get a deal. I was just yeah. going to, you know, see if I can help anyone and get my face out there. And then next time I called up, they started getting used to me. You know, and yeah. then you know, I call up and go, "Hey, Lee," you know, they sort of already know. Yes. So yeah. definitely a good plan. Like it. Yeah, I'm glad to be getting out of the office too. Yeah, yeah. It's, it gets a bit bit much when you're in here all day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Used, used to being out on the road with all my other jobs that I've had, so I'm I'm enjoying getting out and door knocking. How often are you doing it? Like, what's what's your weekly schedule look like with door knocking? Or is I, it a discipline schedule at the moment, or it's not disciplined at the moment. I'm just trying to work things out. 
where, where what best times are. But I've been um, going, trying to get out there sometime in the afternoon. Mm. Um, I, I left at two the other day. Uh, yesterday I left here at three, so I went from three o'clock to five o'clock. And um, I didn't get as much done yesterday in the street as I had the days before, but I had better conversations. Yeah, if people like to talk, it'll, it'll um, definitely take the time, hey? Yeah, yeah. I only got half of them, half the amount. I uh, was doing, like, doing about 100 properties at a guess. Well, in a couple of hours? Yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah, and I'm getting, I think I got, yesterday I talked to about 10 people, only got about 40, 50 houses done. Yeah. But, um, talk, had good conversations with about 10. Uh, the day before, I think it was six, six or eight people I spoke to, but a little bit shorter. Mm. But I got a lot lot more houses knocked. And I'm, I'm leaving my card everywhere I go. What do you, just leave the card in the door or? I hand it to them if they if they answer the door or I um yeah slot it in the in the screen. Just a business card, home. any notes or anything? Pardon? Any notes or anything on it? Not yet. No. It's a bit hard to write on my cards. They're, they're double side grip. Yeah, if you had the if you had the uh, uh I guess the energy to do it, um little yellow sticky notes maybe just hey it's Dave I dropped by today anything we can help you with please call any time. Yeah, stick it to your card and just put it in the door. Yeah, um, we can. what I do, Dave, is it's probably a little bit naughty, and hopefully no one picks up on it. But I hand write something and then photocopy it, and yeah. then I stick that. A, a lot of old people definitely don't pick up that it's been photocopied. Uh, God, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they see it as a handwritten note. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. You can actually that. get yellow sticky notes with that ha your handwritten thing on it, printed yeah. as well. You can order them. Awesome. That's cool. Um, I reckon that, you know, I, I don't really know because I don't do it, but I think door knocking would be better in the afternoon when people are sort of finishing their day rather than starting their day. I just don't yeah. know that would be the case. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, got to have the right motivation and energy to get out there in the afternoon because I know how I feel in the afternoon, particularly yesterday we had a lunch out and Kez and I and another lady from the office and I felt like going to sleep. Um, yeah. So, you know, you lose that motivation in the afternoon, which is why I like, you know, getting on the phones first thing because it pumps yeah. me up for the day. It makes me feel like I've achieved the most important thing and then yeah. everything else just flows effortlessly after that. But um, I couldn't imagine door knocking in the morning, but hey, I don't really know. Yeah, well, I've got other motivations too. Um, I've been getting pretty fat. <laughs> and over the last couple of weeks, I'm losing weight. So, oh, good, that, man. Yeah. That's given me a buzz to get out there and do it more. <laughs> yeah. And then, if you, um, there are a lot of letterboxes around where you are. Like, you can put stuff in yeah. boxes. Yeah. I did a, um, <laughs> a street, what, what I did it called a street notification the other day, so a couple yeah. of weeks ago, probably did it three weeks ago, I think. Yeah. And it's just about informing people that will be around the next week to do market appraisals to update them on on um, what the property market's doing, and I'm not getting results out of it. No, uh, that's a letter I wouldn't use. Yeah. I know the exact letter every agent uses it. Yeah. Basically says, oh, we're doing a marketed, you know, thing in your area, you know, yeah. making out like we're just rad people, like amazing people. Yeah. What everyone else does. So why would it be noticeable? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I just got it. I heard it off one guy. He said, give this a shot. I tried it. It hasn't worked for me. So I don't think it's. What about a sale you've just done? Yeah, yeah. Um, on Monday we're getting a new printer installed Monday, so I plan to go around Currents Hill where I just sold the property. I, I would do. I would do that. Maybe a little sold one, and you can spread that as far as your area goes if you want. You yeah. don't have to do it in the street. Another letter I used when I first started walking uh, the area was just an introduction letter, just a bit. Hey, this is who I am. This is what I'm about. You know, this is what I want to achieve. Yeah. Um, just to introduce myself. Um, and that was quite good. I think Esther might have used that too. Yeah. yeah, I did use that. 
So the notes that I'm using just uh, with door knocking, if you want to know, Dave, would you like to know? Yes. <laughs> okay. yes. Yeah, so just the introductory one, it says, Hi, sorry I missed you. I just dropped by briefly to see if there was anything I could help you with in regards to buying or selling property. Smyrna Property Group is a small business locally owned and operated and we pride ourselves on providing a great service. If I can help you in any way, now we're in the future, please feel free to reach out to me anytime. That sounds awesome. Would you mind sending that to me on Messenger? Yeah, sure. Thanks, Pete. I might give that one a shot. How are you, Ricky? Good. How are you guys doing? Good morning. Just stuck in there. Hey, Ricky. Ricky. <laughs> yeah. It's the end of the day for me, beginning of the day for you. You're all fired up. <laughs> Absolutely. Pretty good, man. That sounds like some pretty cool stuff. You know, if door knocking is what makes you feel good, door knock, you know. Yeah. Or not to your knuckles bleed. Yep. I love cold calling, Ricky, all the way. Yeah, I mean that's me, you know. I um, I did a, I did a two and a half hour session yesterday, and I got twenty seven new contacts for our database. How many calls did you make? Oh, um, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty five, thirty, thirty three. God, you made 33 awesome. and you talked to 27 people? Uh, I only talked to 10 people. Okay. But okay. I, I found numbers, so I'm keeping them in our database. I've left voicemails uh -huh. and I'll just and I'll just ring them again. So you uh so you had 33 calls and you talked to 10 people? Yep. It just sounds so much easier than walking from house to house. Yep. It is, Just and I and the numbers, I, seem boom, to get, I seem to get one appraisal, one casual appraisal every every time. Yeah, but so, it, but everything works though. You know that's why I say it's. I working. feel like it. It does depend on your area. Like I said to you, if I don't have any numbers and I can't get any numbers, I have to go and door knock, and you potentially get those people that other agents don't have contact with. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, yeah. that's for sure. Why, what do you, do you think it's a, like you can't get numbers in your area or is it just per subdivision or where's the breakdown? I don't know. I, I've used uh, CoreLogic obviously and, and there's just no numbers available for some of these areas. We find that gotcha, too gotcha. with the new estates. Like there's bugger all listed up there on CoreLogic. And you know, that's, that's another reason I think that maybe you guys should do both, you know, yeah. door knock and phone call. Um, I think that's yeah. what I was telling you, Dave, last time we were talking, yeah. mix it up between the door knocking and the phone call. Cause you're going to hit some people on the phone that you're not going to get door knocking. And then you're going to door knock people that you can't find their numbers. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Exactly. And, and even the subdivisions that you call go door knock them too. You know, yeah. if you run into the same person you call, be like, Hey, well, he nice to meet you. <laughs> like he, Put a yeah. face with a name kind of deal. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. No, it's all good stuff, man. As long as as long as you're just busy working, trying to have conversations in the market, you're gonna win. Did you, yeah. did you, Dave? I didn't get to talk to you since you since we had our talk with the with the script restructuring. Did you try that? Yeah, I did. I've um. I, I use different properties that we um, we have in diff different areas. I try and pick a property that we sold that's close to the particular area I'm calling and um, get that bit of conversation going, get them eased up at first and then yeah. you know, break in with, um, you know, I don't want to hold you up all day. So, yeah, yeah, this is the reason for my call, blah, blah, blah. And right. I've, I'm filing, finding a little... It's uh, a little better than what I was doing. It's um, it's more relaxing to people, right? Rather than get hitting up, up, hitting them up straight away. Right, right. And the more you practice it, and the more you get in the groove of those conversations, yeah. the more and, smooth and, it'll be. Yeah. The better and results you have. Yeah, each conversation ends up becoming that little bit different, but it flows in the same way. Mm. 
Nice. Nice. Good to hear. Yeah. Thanks heaps for that. Yeah. Yeah. So switch back and forth, you know, don't abandon cold calling, you know, yeah, yeah. don't abandon door knocking, you know, do both kind of have it mapped out every week. I'm going to door knock, you know, Monday and Tuesday. I'm going to make calls Wednesday and Thursday or whatever. Yeah. Try to mix yeah. it, try to mix it up. What I'm plan planning to do is like do nine to 11 every morning. That's I, I either get the best results either first thing in the morning or later in the afternoon. But yeah. I'm also getting good results door knocking, like much better results door knocking in the afternoon. So I think that should call in the morning, door knock in the afternoon. Hey, Dave, do you um, use the same sort of communication style at every house or do you are you winging it as to who you're talking to? I, I pretty much, I'm almost, I'm, it's a little bit of both. You know, I, I walk up with the intention of just, in introducing myself but i try and get into a conversation with them and you know try and get friendly basically. yeah just so next time i come around oh hey how are you going Dave? yeah, yeah so, so your script is just letting them know you're active in the area yeah 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 just letting them know where we where we're based um yeah the areas that we we cover um yeah. yeah, yeah, and just build trying to build a connection rather than sell yeah. them something. Yeah, okay. You get good results though, Kez. Give us a little steal of what you do. Oh, I just pretty much copy Ricky. Yeah, <laughs> I remember you saying that. I do, and I even you know find myself saying, I didn't know if there's anything I could do for you, and then my gestures start coming in. I don't assume <laughs> buying or selling. <laughs> And like they can't even see me, but I'm just like getting really you. <laughs> um, yeah, so I have some really good. Co some conversations will go on for 20 minutes, and then I'm like watching the clock, going, "Oh, better get off." But um, it's it, they're good conversations, good connections, and then um, often it leads to something where they're like, "Oh, yeah, I really need to find a good broker." And then I'm like, "Oh, well, I can hook you up. I'll send you give us your email. I'll send that out to you." Or they'll say um, that their kids are looking to buy and I'm like, great, let's find out what they want and I'll, I'll put you in the database and, you know, let's stay in touch over the time. Maybe we can help them find a place as well. Mm. Love it. Yeah, good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but, yeah, I just... Um, when I started, I was just listening to Ricky's prospecting calls online and then I printed out his sheet and I just sort of followed that. And obviously I've got Lee with me, so I pick up on what he does too a lot and he gives me little tips. Like last week I was saying a little bit, just wanted to report on a, um, a sale in your street and he's like, nah, don't do that. It's too selly. So I went, okay, no worries. I'll change it up. Just um, didn't know whether you knew that a house is just sold in your street um, and that's sort of my line in. And then they're like, oh, yeah, what did it go for? Or um, that was a big place. Did they renovate that? And, you know, go from there. Mm. So just yeah. constantly. And it's so good, you know, having these coaches so we can, they can pick up on the, the little mistakes that we're making. Well, I think when you're starting out, a mix of both is is really good, you know. You've got a bit more time to make the calls in the morning, get out there in the streets in the afternoon, get your face known around your community, um, ideally focusing on a niche area too, so your face will be more recognised as well. Yeah. Uh, and that'll pay off. And I started doing that when I first started here in this area. In the mornings, I'd make calls. In the afternoons, I'd go out and I'd just set myself a goal of two streets, door knock two streets. Um, and that was good, you know. I didn't really enjoy it too much, but had good, some good chats with people, got my face out there. But then when I, once I started getting more listings and that, I found that I couldn't actually do that anyway um, because mm. it was too much of a time suck um, where I had buyer inspections and appraisals to attend instead. So um, it sort of fell to the wayside. But, yeah, good way to get numbers, that's for sure. Mm. And while you're walking um, around, you let a box dropping too. Like, why not put something in their box if you don't get to talk Dave, to them? Dave and Esther, do you guys... Um, find it easy to get numbers and emails when you're door knocking? Will they give them over? I haven't tried uh, it yet. Yeah, not always. Um, 
you know, if they've made it clear that they're probably not looking to sell at least in the five years or something, they usually, I'll offer them, I say, well, look, I can take your number. I have got a few. They say, look, if you can find me in the right place, um, I'm certainly happy to sell. So I get all the details of what they're after. And then I get their email address and their phone number. Um, and I say, look, if I do get anything, yeah, I'll, I will certainly be in touch. Um, but sometimes, yeah, they just say, no, thanks. And I go, yeah, that's no worries. Sometimes they say, can I pass on a business card? Sometimes they're more than happy. Other times they go, oh, no, I'm fine, thanks. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And so are they wanting to stay in touch, even if they're not thinking of selling in the next five years? Are they still sort of going, yeah, yeah, I'm happy to it stay in touch? It really depends. And sometimes you catch people at a bad time. So they're, they're sick or they say, oh, I'm just on the phone. I'm so sorry. So it's just a case of being consistent probably and, you know, doing like everyone's saying, a combination of everything. Because I sometimes door knock and then they go, oh, where are you from again? And I pass over my card and they go, oh, you actually dropped something in the letterbox the other day. And I said, yeah, that was probably me. Cool. Yeah. I say when I leave, I say oh, I'll be door knocking this area every month. So next time I'm in the area, I'll drop in and say hello. And they're, they're all like, yeah, that'd be great. Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Most people like to talk, hey? They're just waiting yeah. for someone else to go first. Yep. <laughs> The um, I've got a case study for everyone. We can we can nut this out, Ricky. You might be able to throw some ideas in. We've got a uh, a property for sale at the moment. Kez and I are working on it. Um, Kez is dealing with the buyers. Um, we've had some really good offers come in. Well, I think they're they're quite good offers. Not quite where the owners want it to be yet. Um, now one of the offers was at seven hundred and fifty two thousand dollars. Subject to a pesting building finance and a, a 30 day settlement, I think. Um, so, a fairly standard offer, 752. And that was probably um, a pretty good offer for the property. We had a few others under that at about 730. So, a 750 we thought was quite good. We presented to the owners. They said no, they still want to wait, see what else comes through. Um, Kez managed to get them up to $765,000. We've also removed the pest and building condition um, because they were satisfied with the one that we had done. Um, so we improved the offer and presented that. And then the owners still said, oh, look, don't really know. Don't really want to countersign. Um, yada, yada, yada. They sort of suggested maybe they wanted 780 and then he sort of threw out the figure 800. Uh, and I said, yep, well, we work for you. We can do whatever you need to do. You know, let's countersign and see if we can get them up. We'll certainly try. I feel that they've come to a, a peak point. Then he said, maybe we'll just wait for this weekend to pass and see what else comes through the weekend before we make a decision. I said, that's fine too. I said, I don't know what these buyers are like, but obviously they're keen to buy. And if they find something on the weekend, you might miss out on them. Um, but he was comfortable with that. Um, mm -hmm. And then he rang me back about half an hour, hour later. And he said, oh, look, if you can get them to 780, we'll sign it off. So that's where we're at. What do you do next? Mm. I have mine. Well, but I just thought I'd throw it out there to everyone. Can, can the buyers come up? No, I spoke to her yesterday afternoon and she said um, that would be too much of a stretch for them. <clears throat> but I think if we put something on paper from the vendor and then go back to the buyer and show them on paper. Um, we'll see We'll see what they can do. Yeah, and I guess it's just a matter of yeah, really saying, look, they're really stretched. We have bought them as far as they can come. Um, and I know there is a, someone asked for it the other day on Workplace Chat, a form that basically said that was their final and highest offer just to, uh, I guess show that you have tried to work them and 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 it's just that extra layer of um what's the word I'm looking for of proof that you've got them to as good as you can but I don't know I don't know uh, what do you do stories deceive us all the time though you know like they say that they're not their max and then next minute you hear of all these renovations they're doing and they're putting in a new pool and you're like oh well obviously you had money there and maybe um, that's where they see the value in the home, though. 
So if that's where they see the value and you can't bring them up. Well, these buyers have said, you know, um, they're happy to wait till Monday to sort of see what happens. But on Monday, they're going to back away. That's it, you know. So we'll lose them. But if it's the sake of just a few thousand dollars, that's why I think if, I don't know, Lee, like you're obviously the guru, but if, if we can show them something on paper and then they come back if they you know savvy enough to play the game and go well we won't do 780 but we'll do 775 you know just close the gap a bit mm-hmm. yeah. yeah look my thoughts are um pretty much we will get them up um i'm pretty happy <laughs> with that i think at 780 it might be a stretch for them but hey they know what the market's like um, i'm being very careful of just about how you present that offers to clients. You go in there with letters from the buyers um, or or indications that that's just their peak point. They might start to feel like you're not on their side. And yeah. we work for the clients primarily. Yeah. Uh, I've made the mistake too many times in the past where I've sort of said, look, this is the buyer's you know best offer. You don't want to miss this and get a bit more pressure with the owners. Um, and I found that never worked. So yeah. If we go back to the buyer, the owners, and say, "Look, well, let's do 780. Let's sign it on a contract. We'll sit down with the buyers face to face if we can. If mm. we can't do it face to face, and you know, we have to do it over the phone or whatever, and say, look, mm. this is it, guys. They're happy to sign this off. They've signed it. It's ready. It's yours. We can take it off the market before this weekend, so you don't miss out. Or mm. you can wait until Monday, see what happens this weekend. They still may not be in a position to set, you know, your six seven sixty five offer." Um, and so you still might be back to square one. So it's just up to you. I know you, you said it's a stretch, but look at how the prices have moved over the last six months. They're likely to move as the borders open in Queensland, another mm. 5% or maybe even more. So you're not going to really be stressed about that extra $15,000 in 10 years' time. Yeah. So let's seal the deal. Let's do the deal at 780 and take it off the market. And then they might be going, yep, that's good. Mm. They might say no, but hey. That's your best way to get them up. Yeah, well, yeah. fingers crossed. Definitely well, give it a go. Just to add more layers, we've got another buyer that made a verbal offer of seven ninety, and um, he was a truck driver. He's like, oh, I don't want to bullshit you. I just want to, you know, throw it out there seven ninety. They hadn't seen the property. I got money sitting around there. I just need to buy something else. And and then the wife did a drive by. She didn't know the area. And then she messaged and said that um, they've got, you know, they're looking at something else. And I'm like, no worries. And then she messaged me last night and said, um, you know, sorry, it's been hectic with work and everything. We're still interested in the property, but can we do a virtual um, walkthrough with you? Um, Because we're still interested. So now if, you know, she's seen the area now, if they do this virtual and they love it, which I'm sure they will, it's a really neat and tidy home. We could potentially have an offer there of seven ninety. So it's like, what do you do? Um, yeah, well, you just don't know. I spoke to someone the other day, and they said that the price was a bit high. They couldn't get any buyers. Oh. Uh, they kept it on the market, and then You're switching this real estate thing, and these guys are stupid. <laughs> and then eventually, <laughs> eventually they um, <laughs> eventually they. Uh, didn't drop the price and they got a better offer. So you never know. In a couple of weeks' time, someone might sell another home and uh, they just get it. What what was the what was the buyer's last offer again? Seven sixty five. And then the the seller wants seven eighty. Yeah, they, and it's a bit frustrating because he indicated to us he wanted seven seventy. Well, and that's why you never believe anything anybody says, right? You always believe what they put on paper and sign. They can say whatever they want to, but until it's on paper, it doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Um, and so, um, you know, what, what the bottom line is, is, okay, Mr. Buyer and Mr. Seller, like, are y'all willing to walk away? Is this your walk away number? You know, or are mm-hmm. you buyer going to walk away if it's anything... Yeah more than 765 seller are you willing to walk away uh, from this deal you know over this 15,000 or you want to meet in the middle like you know Mm. there's a lot of it's it comes down to 
right now, nobody's walking away, which tells me everybody's mm-hmm. still in the game and they're still willing to give a little bit. Yeah. Um, you know, but you know, when they get to where they're like ready to walk away and just, you know, be done with the deal, that's when, you know, you've hit their rock bottom. I don't know that we're there yet on these two, right? Mm, yeah. I don't think you know, so. We don't know for sure. Like they're saying 780 is their lowest. They're saying 6765 is their highest, but we don't know for sure if that's true because no. they neither have indicated that they're willing to walk away yet. Yeah. Mm. You know, <clears throat> I think there's the last two properties I've sold. I've had offers that were almost at the level that I actually got for the property. The owners have said, have rejected the offers. And I, I, they come back to me at a later date, like a couple of days later, and said they'll accept it. And the buyers that made those offers have gone and found other property. But uh. I've used them for new buyers and, and actually got more on both both the properties. There's only 5,000 more, but I got it up that little bit more because yeah. I already had the offer in at that point. I just said, yeah, I've had an offer at that. And it was rejected. So they come up with a little bit more. And then the, I already know the owner would, would, would accept it because they've realised that they're missing the buyer. And when the next offer comes in, they take it straight away. On both occasions. It always helps when you get that other offer or previous offers, hey? Yeah, yeah. And I guess that's what Kez can say to the truck driver guy. Mm. You know, or yep. the other buyer at 765. And I guess if, if they do put it on paper, then you've got to, you can actually give them the multiple offer form as well. Yeah, they've, they've got that already. They know, they know there's other offers. Okay. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yes, yeah, very good. Well, let us know how that deal works out. Yeah, we'll do. It's only been a week, so it's been it's been an exciting week. Um, you know, and uh, a week too long. A week too long, you reckon, Lee? <laughs> no, no, you're getting greedy, Lee. Come on. <laughs> Time to move it on. Yeah. <clears throat> it's a little go, little go. They've had enough evidence. I mean, they've had, you know, they've had two, three offers. They've had a few verbal indicators. You know, they'll get more evidence over the weekend. So it'll just be up to them to make a decision. And their mum is wanting to move next to their sister. So the motivation's right there, even though they're playing hard. Mm. Um, She's not going to stop that move, and, and the family's not going to hold her back from that move for the sake of five, ten grand, you know? Yeah. Gonna... Yep. Mm, exciting. That's it from me. Anyone else got anything to share? We just had some dude on having a go at us. Did you hear that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's why I laughed. <laughs> I didn't know yeah. what it, where it was coming from. I thought we had to invite them in but anyway i've booted him out who yeah. was it let's let's, Google, let's facebook him <laughs> yeah he's probably some loser that sells one property a year <laughs> <laughs> All right. well we might be assuming things though he might have said these guys are stupid talking about something else <laughs> that's true that's true <laughs> good on you diplomatic esther yes <laughs> yeah <laughs> awesome cool guys um lee we have a podcast today no mate that was with will so he's canceled oh he canceled and then next week i'm in connecticut so i'm gone oh uh, yeah we don't have anything that week do we no okay when is, when is then... that coming out guys because i'm keen to listen next what's week? that oh yeah 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 after the first we're piling up some episodes hello everyone lee here from <laughs> Well, and then, then um, and then I'll be in EXPCon that next week. I'm guessing no, none of you guys are coming to Vegas, correct? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're funny. Come on, come to EXPCon. Yeah, I'd love to. I'm sail over there. 
We'll be there in spirit. Hey, just put us on <laughs> Zoom. Put us on Zoom call. <laughs> they'll have they'll have it. Uh, they'll have it virtually. I mean, they'll be sharing sharing it virtually as well. So. Yeah. Cool. Wow. All right. Well, you guys, you guys go get them. We'll thanks. talk to you soon. Everyone, thanks, Zach. Thanks, Ricky. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.